Hi, in today's video we're going to install a dehumidifier into our camper. We have our camper sitting up in the mountains of North Carolina and it's a high humidity area and we're at that perfect point of the year where the it's not cold enough to turn on a heater to dry out the air and it's not hot enough to turn on an air conditioner to dry out the air so it gets this kind of musty extra humidity in the air that molds real perfect you know recipe for mold in this camper. So whether it's stored or where you're in it, you want to have some way to get the humidity out and the uh, damp rid things are just not working for us. So what I want to do is basically allow some conduit to get the, uh, the uh, moisture that the dehumidifier can pull out of the air out of the box. So with that, let's go run through what we, what we need to do. All right, so this is what we're working with. Here's our dehumidifier and what we need to do is get the, the water because the problem is, is that this little, this little reservoir that they have here fills up pretty fast so that's not very good it's not going to work for us but one of the convenient things they have is they have an, an extra port over here where you can directly pipe the uh, the water out so instead of filling up here it dumps it into this port basically it's a, a, a garden hose kind of fitting and you kind of make a hose connecting connection into here you run the hose out and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a hole in here drill a hole I've got a uh, a external what you would have for city water for a camper that would be going right here and I'm going to drill a hole that'll go through there that'll allow it to exit through here and then exit out to the outside and I'll have the same thing on the outside. It'll look like a city water but it'll be labeled for discharge of the dehumidifier only and the reason I have it like that is I need the screen over the, the port so that no animal or no little bug will crawl in there and make a nest, block it and then what would happen is it would basically backfill and then just dump all the water out here which is not something you want to do if you're gone for a couple weeks at a time. So one other thing we need to think about is this is only, there's no pressure, there's only gravity that feeds through here. So from this port here, everything needs to flow downhill. So this inlet port needs to be low enough that it goes through here. And also this is the slide out, so you need to make sure that nothing can kind of catch on this. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a hose long enough that the slide could be all the way in. And this can be over here to the corner and go around and then basically come down through here, go into that port and exit and everything can, is a continual downhill fall all the way to the end, all the way to the outside of the camper. So uh, with that, uh, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna open this panel up and show you what I'm working with on the inside. So this panel, this is a, uh, a gray wolf. This is a 29 foot bunkhouse gray wolf. And for this panel, there's, and I think most campers are the same way. They use these uh, very low end, in my opinion, uh, type of hardware. This is just a square bit. They're very short, square wood bits. There's only two that holds it out and you pull the, that right out. So with that, I'm also going to introduce my little helper today, which I have, Hi. my little daughter. She's helping me today. So she's going to be helping me pull this off and we'll get in there and see what we can do. So here's what we're looking at on the inside of this panel. On the left there is the city water input, basically where you hook up and make your connection for city water. There's just your fill for your water tank. And then that's your electrical uh, connections there that go into the uh, camper to power the entire camper. So somewhere between there is where I want to put it. Somewhere probably right around here, probably a little lower, is where I'm going to put it. It's a very small connection. It'll look just like the back of that. It's a, a single city water connection. So uh, like I said, I'm going to label it so people don't know that it's not a city water. And uh, other than that, that is uh, easy enough. So and then it'll come over to this panel over here and everything will be a downhill grade to that point. You know, ignore the uh, the mud. This is a fairly new site, so we've got some rain. we've had some rain recently, so it's splashed mud up here. I haven't had a chance to clean it yet, uh, but I'll do that here when we move. We have a top that we're putting over the camper here in the not too distant future, so that'll eliminate all this. Uh, so this is what it looks like. It's a city water connection, just as you have here. The only difference is this is a two. This is a fresh water connection, a city water connection, and this one will go uh, right here or right here, depending on how big of a space that I have inside. Uh, I'd like to keep it kind of away from the electrical if I can, put it over here, but if I have to, I will put it here um, for sake of uh, uh, running the cable on the inside, and the, the conduit on the inside. So with that, I'll, uh, I'll go from the inside and drill a hole out, and so that I can, all I need is a hole big enough to allow that to come out, and that's all I have to do. And I have, I bought these on Amazon, I'll, I'll put you a link in the description, but I did have to take out the check valves because there is no pressure. This is just, you know, free falling water. Uh, and not very much a drop at a time. So I did have to take out the check valves out of these for this one and the internal one. And uh, that's pretty much, I think, all I have to do. And you just put a little caulk on the back side of this to, to seal it so that you won't have any, just like you do on these, so that you won't have any water intrusion inside the camper. So the next step we need to do is we need to measure from where the water will come out here to where we want to connect into the wall. It has to be lower than this point, so shorter and closer to the ground than that point. 
and we're going to do that over there into that wall so we need to take a measurement over here with that i'll have my little assistant here help me and show me how what we're looking for let's go all the way down to the ground take the tape measure all the way to the ground what about are we looking 10. at about 10 inches yeah, okay 10 inches. 10 inches it is then all right all right so 10 inches we'll bring this it'll be a little lower than 10 inches so i'll just give it an inch drop to the wall so i want to put it right about so there's nine inches and then here let's make it a little more straight there's nine inches there i think that is about where i want the center of that next hole going of the entrance hole so i drilled through i left the drill bit in there as a reference point to see just kind of see where we're going to be and so if you kind of get on the same level and you look through You'll see that drill bit is above the other ports on the outside for the uh, city water and for the fresh water. So as long as we keep it at the same level as the fresh water, we'll be in good shape. So there's no complaints there. So I think we're we're going to just do that. We're going to. I'd like to put it on the other side over here, uh, over on this side. But if I have to put it on this side, I will. But I'll just I'll make that decision here in a second, and you'll see which which way I went with that. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do this the hard way because I don't have a hole saw, which would be fantastic and it'd take me just a couple seconds to do that. I'm going to have to take this drill bit and make a circle of holes and then kind of punch it out so that I can make that diameter for that. And I actually might have a wood bit. So I might be able to make the wood bit for this one. The other one, maybe not so much. It's a rough hole saw, but I was able to just push this, the uh, drill bits around and be able to cut between those little pieces. It's very, very thin wood, so it makes it kind of nice. But once you install it, almost, you just have to do a little finessing, but it'll fit right in there. And it'll be a very, you know, look a little nicer, have a nice little, nicer little fit and finish to it. So I want to explain something else that looks, that's non-standard here. Is I actually had an issue where when it was on city water, there was enough pressure that ran through the line that it would this this was normally connected over to the pump, and they would just go through and go to the pump on the T. So when the pump was running, it would pull water from the freshwater tank up through the through the pump, through the pump back into the T, pressurize your line. The problem is there's enough pressure on the city water that when it when it come in here, the problem that I would have is it would backfill through the check valve that was in the pump. And the only thing I could see is you have to replace the whole pump, which instead of buying a couple hundred bucks. I've, saw, I've seen a bunch, a bunch of reviews where the pump's perfectly fine, but you have to keep replacing it because the check valve goes bad. So having Pex plumbing at the house anyway, and I have all the crimps and tools for it, I just added the T. Well, I didn't add the T. T was already here. What I did is I just went and uh, plumbed it up through here, put in a cutoff valve. And so I just put the cutoff valve on almost city water. Pump's perfectly fine. Check valve is still there, but it's just it's the check valve doesn't have any pressure on it. And then it runs up and around, back down. It just kind of hugs the wall, comes back through, comes into the pump. So that's how it comes out. And so with that, I was able to remove this hose, um, which is the one that would connect the two. And so now I'm just gonna repurpose it and save myself a couple of little bucks, which is great because that's the same threading that goes on the back side of that. So with that, I'll uh, just make that connection and slide it through the wall. I was in a, out of an abundance of caution, I'm gonna put a little thread sealant on here. You should be good. There's a big gasket on the back side of this that will marry up to the inside of this and should provide a really good seal. But just in case I'm going to put the thread sealant on here, or I'm not gonna do it, my, my lovely assistant's going to do it. And she's going to put the thread sealant on here for me. And uh, then we'll thread that on after we put this part through because these little tabs here won't allow it to go through the hole. I'll slide this back in, then I'll tighten and put that on there for on that. Yep, just roll it. Make sure you keep it flat. Keep it flat and then roll it like that. Keep it tight and kind of put a little pressure on the end and tighten it and pull. And that's all you got to do, just like that. Mommy. So here's here was look here's what it looks like fully installed. These are the this is the hardware that came with it. You just screw it right in. There's not much for it to bite onto. As you can see from the other side, the screws just went right through. It's not very strong. If you really wanted to, you could put another piece of wood on the back and firm it up. But for this, it's not putting a lot of pressure and nobody's gonna really grab on it really hard. So the idea is that that should be enough. That's just trying to keep it from rotating. And that those screws, even though they don't bite on much, bite very much, they should keep it from rotating very well. What I found to be the best place is actually right underneath this. 
So where I'm going to put that is going to be right underneath here, which works out well. Keeps it kind of what I wanted to do, which is uh, away from the electrical, puts it right underneath here. So I have room on the back side of this, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, it'll be the back, it'll be the pump, so we're in good shape with that. I'm just going to start drilling in there. So I've in essence drilled a rough hole here. So what I'm gonna do is take a pair of plier, or a pair of cutters, cut out those sections between the holes, and basically connect the dots as it were. That over there. It kind of gives me a clear shot into there. There is a piece of wood that runs underneath here, so I have to go underneath that should be okay. I am, I am good. So what I found to be the easiest thing is to go ahead and connect this. I've already done the same thing, put the tape on it, and then I've tightened this up pretty good. And what I've found to be the easiest thing will be to cut it large enough that the, I can get these ears in. Then I can slide this all the way through and then just put it in secure from that side because there's a hole, there's a bulkhead on this from this point in inside. There's another piece of wood inside that's about that far, and it's about where I need to tighten it on without cutting a big, larger swath on the inside. I'm gonna have to, it'll be easier for me to cut it from the outside, cut little uh, basically little ears on this so that allow these, these pieces here to go through. So that's the current plan. widen that notch out some it works out because I am able to get it through there and get it through that bulkhead side as well and I'm gonna have to probably go inside and pull it up some and get it up and then I can uh, caulk this back in and about as soon as I said that I was able to slide it in some so there is that just using some adhesive water Waterproof uh, sealant caulk, basically it adds a uh, layer of adhesion as well. So that's what I'm looking for. The one thing I do plan to come do is to have some way to kind of, because otherwise the water is just going to continue to drip right through here. I have something that kind of pulls it out and allows it to kind of drip down a little further. So, other than that, I'm going to put a label here that just says, uh, it just states that it is for the uh, dehumidifier drain only. And then uh, that is, that's basically it. And you can see you put a label there because you never know if you're going to sell it or if somebody's borrowing your trailer or camper and doesn't know any better. Hooking up pressure, uh, city water to this would be a bad idea. I, as I don't have any check valves in here and it would just blast water into inside, which would be non-ideal. But for this situation, I know what I'm using it for. I think everybody that's here with me knows what it's using for is using it for also. Um, and city water is right here, of course. So with that, uh, let's go transition. So the next step is inside the dehumidifier, you'll pull out the reservoir tray and you have this connection, at least on this model. And most of them are like this and it's a standard garden hose fitting. So what I did is went to uh, Amazon and I purchased some basically barbed fit ones for a hose. I think I've got, I believe it's a half inch hose off the top of my head. I believe it's half inch. So it's really the male, uh, the female side to a male side and you're just making your own garden hose. You can use a short, you can buy on Amazon a short garden hose. But what I wanted to do was to have the hose so I could see fluid running through it. Once again, it's another Amazon purchase. I'll put both of these in the link in the uh, link in the description. Uh, but I believe this was 25 feet and I'll just cut it to length, whatever length I need. I'll just cut it to make uh, the connection in between the two points. And those two points will be where I will have the dehumidifier, which will be in front of this once the panel goes back in. It will go right here over to, and around to here, along with enough space for this, the uh, slide to retract and not impact the hose. So I want to have it kind of come through here, drape down and go back in there. So with that, let's uh, start making a little hose and making a small mini garden hose and connecting everything up. All right, so what we're looking to do is have a hose 
it can go from around about here over to there. So that. Cut that off. And then we'll cut that and we'll have to reseal that later. Okay. So this will go in through here. So it'll go in there and it'll go on the barb. So I'll give myself a little bit extra space because you can always cut it a little shorter. So the hose is going to go in and go through there like that. Let's cut it to that length. Right here? Yeah, cut it to that length. Well, let's put the blade on top. That's usually a little safer. Open it up. Open. Yeah, there you go. And now just close it down. Yeah. You hit ratchet. Okay, keep going. There you go. Just like that. So there is that hose. Like that. I can unscrew it with it. What you can do is unscrew that one. That'll be helpful. You having trouble with it? Just rotate. <laughs> Water out of the air. It's called a dehumidifier because there's humidity in the air. And it's a dehumidifier. We want to get the, the heat, I mean, the moisture out of the air so that it exactly you just screw it in like that and then you now have a dehumidifier hose like How that nobody's nothing's going to be molding and it's good correct and the good thing is you can put this right back on there it looks good and away it goes oh this one's just blown out dry air so it's 82 percent humidity Set it for 50 for right now. Set it for 50%. And what we'll do is we'll watch it. It'll come through here. It'll fill up this hose. It'll probably be filled up to the point there. You'll see it just fill up. And then it'll start just tripping. So this is how it's the finished product, as it were. I don't like how it looks, but it will be behind this panel. Uh, but it really connects in through here. It runs out on the back side over there. And it goes out through the wall. And as you've seen, I've uh, already put the uh, caulk around that to, to water, make it watertight. And then we'll let it flow. We're staying here over the weekend, have a little daddy-daughter uh, weekend here in the mountains. And I'm going to stay with it over the weekend, just see how it works and um, make sure there's no issues, no leaks. And then after that, we should be in good shape. Just leave it running while we're out of town. So I hope you enjoyed my video. I always enjoy making them. And uh, since, move, since moving and selling our house, I haven't been able to make any videos. And anywhere I can, I'll try to make a video for everybody. But uh, like I said, the humidity when we plugged it in was at 82% already in inside the uh, camper, and we've had the heater running a, a couple times as well because we're trying to, you know, we're staying in it. However, the uh, what we've been using is these damp rid packets, things like this, and uh, also these hanging ones as well. They have not been able to keep up with it. We have about three in here along with that, and this 30 foot camper, and it's not been able to keep up. It's just they're already full, and you go away for a week, and it still has got a lot of humidity. So. Uh, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please uh, subscribe and like my channel, and you can get more videos like this. Thanks, have a good day.